Welcome to a new video about LC ladder filter design. In this example, we'll continue with the Butterworth response filters, but we will specifically look at the unmatched source resistor and the load resistor. Now we have seen that we have discussed in many different configurations like the Butterworth response, Bessel, Chebyshev, and elliptic response, where we have the source resistor is equal to the load resistor, so they are matched. In this case, we will see an unmatched variation. Now, this is also done uh, because there were some questions in the previous examples about the LC ladder filter configuration. So, upon request, I have also prepared this video such that we have more insight in this LC ladder filter design. So, let's see what we need to do for our Butterworth response design for this example. Okay, we have now a design objective. We'd like to design a Butterworth response passive LC ladder filter, low pass configuration, and we need to have in a final design that our load resistor is 50 ohm and our source resistor is 10 ohms. So this is different. You can see that this is not matched. And the specification in this case are maximum pass mode ripple of 1 dB, minimum stop and attenuation of 10 dB, and the pass band frequency of 1 kilohertz and stop band frequency of 2 kilohertz. So how do we solve this design problem? Okay, first the calculations in our solutions. Step one, we always start with the filter order. In this case, we use the maximum and the minimum values here to determine the filter order N. So we go to the epsilon P from the A max that is for using this formula. So we get 0 0.5088 and epsilon s for the stop band part you get now here in this case 3 exactly okay now taking these together in the formula of the Butterworth response we get a value which is 2.5597 so we need to use integer values so we round it off to ns3 that means we need a third order Butterworth response filter for this design problem. So we haven't discussed about the source and the load resistance yet, but let's now bring up the Butterworth response table. And you see here in the first column, the ratio of the source resistor and the load resistor. Now, when this is one, you get exactly the same parameters as we have discussed in the previous examples about the Butterworth response. Now, when this ratio changes, for example, to 0 0.9 or 0 0.8, and then the coefficient also changes. So that is actually what we need to do. In this case, we'll see that we have an RS of 10 and an RL of 50. That means 1 over 5, so it means 0.2. So let's then 10 over 50 or 0.2. That will, mean, that will mean we need to look at this part of the row in our table. Okay, now we also know what our coefficients are, x1, x2, and x3. So, before we look at these coefficients, let's first calculate the frequency scaling factor, kf, which is also the cutoff frequency for this filter. That is given by this expression. We need to have the omega p, which is 2 pi times the passive frequency, and we also have the epsilon p, also the filter order. So, we can substitute everything, we get this in radius per second which is then 1,253 hertz, which is our cutoff frequency. Okay, now the scaled component values. This is the unscaled prototype low-pass filter for the third order of configuration, RS here, sort resistor, and RL load resistor. But we need to now scale it up to the actual design, having 10 ohm and 50 ohm for the scores and the load. Of course, also the scaled up versions for the capacitors and the inductor. Now that means we need to go to the primed values. So how do we do that? Now we of course use the coefficients in here. So C1 prime will be C1 over the Km and Kf. Now what is Km? Now we need to go from the 1 ohm because it is normalized to a load resistor here. So 1 ohm to 50 ohm. So that means Km, the magnitude scaling factor for the circuit is 50. And the Kf, which is the frequency scaling factor, is 7870. So that means we just use this coefficient, C1 over 50 times 7870. So it will give us this capacitor value. For L2 prime, so going from here to here, we use this formula. You see again the 
magnitude scaling factor and the frequency scaling factor and L2 is from here, which is 0 0.2842. That will give us 1.806 millihenries. In a similar form for C3 prime, of course, we will use this value and the same Km and the Kf, so you get now 20.1 microfarads. Okay, what about the source resistor and the load resistor? Of course, we need to go to 10 ohms, so that means RS prime will be Km times RS. Now, RS, we started actually with 0.2. That is actually the normalized value for the RS source resistor. That means 50 times 0.2 will be 10 ohms. And for the RL prime will be then 50 times 1 will be 50 ohms. So these are the values we need to have in our final design circuit. So the design circuit in the Tina Ti Spice is shown here. This is the scaled up version and this is the unscaled prototype version. You see also the values here, 2.996 farads, all from the table. Okay, let's now go to the simulation results. This is the body plot, looking only at the game. You see here also the circuit again. This part is the passband gain, which is minus 1.584 dB which is also the low frequency gain of 5 over 6. Why is it 5 over 6? Let's look at the low frequency gain, because at low frequencies, the circuit will behave as a voltage divider, which is RL over RS plus RL, which is as shown here. And when you calculate now the 20 log of that value, we'll get now 20 log of 5 over 6, which is now 5 over 6 here, mon minus 1.584 dB. Now the other parts, we see here also another label, which is the A max. So going from the baseline here down at one kilohertz, we go to minus 2.584 dB. So that is a decrease of one dB, which is as required. The cutoff frequency here is 1.253 kilohertz. That is also what we had as the frequency scaling factor. So that is also correct. The next one is about the actual stop band attenuation. This is the minimum required, so that we need 10 dB. Now going again from this baseline down at 2 kilohertz, we see a value of minus 14.033 dB. So we go down by 12.45 dB. So at least 10 dB, so this is also achieved. Okay, in summary, we have this information for this circuit. So we met our design objectives for this circuit. Okay, in summary, we can also give the element values for the LC ladder filter configuration. This is for the second order for the Butterworth response. Again, you see here the ratios for RS over RL, so source resistor over the load resistor. And these are the components in the uh, normalized values. This is for the third order, and this is for the fourth order. And these are the circuits you can use for those designs. I hope this clarifies the situation also for an unmatched uh, source and a load resistor. And we will, of course, continue with other examples uh, in order to illustrate this concept in great detail. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.